Hey guys, I'm recording this as a follow-up to my last Blender tutorial. Um, hopefully the audio quality is a little better. Um, in the last tutorial I showed you guys how I export figures and place them on trays. But I thought that rather than just showing you how I toggle options on and off, I should show you some actual basic Blender controls. So I'm going to walk you through how I'm going to customize this model here. Um, this is a French flank company figure that I've put into a clean environment in the figure exporter. Um, you can't see my mouse at the moment, nor my key presses, so I'm going to describe what I'm doing. I hope that works for you. Anyway, let's start with some useful key binds in Blender. Um, if I hold my left mouse and click and drag, I can make a box and select everything that uh, my mouse falls over. So you'll see that I've selected uh, by the outline this uh, these straps on the on the gray coat and this guy's collar, which I don't want. You can actually deselect things. If I press B for box select, hold shift and hold left mouse and drag, I unselect anything the box touches. The reason I press shift is because shift sort of inverts the usual function, because usually with box select, it's the same as click and drag. It selects things in a box. Anyway, uh, that's getting a bit more complicated than I meant to, just because I made a mistake. Um, I think the most useful key binding to teach you guys first is G. G is the key we press when we want to move something. I remember it by thinking G for grab. So if I press G now, the head moves with my mouse. This isn't very precise though. Uh, while you have something in your hand, as it were, like this, while you're grabbing something, you can actually press uh, letters on your keyboard that correspond to different axes. So if I press X now, you see this red line appears, which in Blender indicates the, re uh, the X axis. And now moving my mouse around, the head is moving up and down just the X axis. If I move the mouse up and down, nothing. I can change the uh, X axis if I want to. I can press Z. Now it's on the z-axis, or y, yeah? Um, this one's mostly only useful if you're moving parts around on the model, but we're going to be using it a little today when we uh, correct head placements. The reason I've selected this guy's head is because I want to show you how you can customize miniatures to have a bit more variety to them and export them uh, with different head angles and such. Anyway, um, I'm going to undo what I've done now. So I'm gonna left click to drop the head which is now here, and press Control z which many of you will know is the classic undo button. So that's gone back to where it was. If you're wondering how I'm rotating the camera, by the way, I'm pushing in the mouse wheel and uh, moving my, my mouse around to twist the camera. Right, so it stands to reason that we're going to want uh, several varieties for our four strip. That's four different guys, and let's pose them all individually. They're all going to have the same hat. I do have lots of different types of... Um, bicorn that are cocked in different ways, but just for the sake of simplicity, this guy's just going to have his hat leaning one way. So let's export this guy. I've clicked File, moving to Export, STL, uh, Desktop, going to make a new folder. Uh, let's call it um, Tutorial Example Figures. Okay, going to call this guy number one, Export. Now let's give him a friend. Uh, again, exactly the same figure, but let's move the mouse, uh, move the, the, the figure so he's looking the other way. Um, what we do is we, sorry I got ahead of myself, went too fast for you. Box select. I'm going to hold shift as well because I didn't select the uh, the mustache but if I hold shift and left click it will select that in addition to everything else. Uh, so there's his head. Now to rotate we press R for rotate and it's sort of, well, a bit unstable if you just do it off the bat, but just like how by pressing Z with grab I move to the Z axis, I can do that with rotate. Now he's rotating on the Z axis. But because um, all these objects selected together, Blender considers their center of mass to not correspond to the center of the head. So that's a bit of a problem. There are different ways around that. We could just rotate him, but you see his head isn't quite right and use grab to sort of move it until it looks right. So I've just moved it back on the y-axis. Can move it up, down. That looks a bit better, but it's not really perfect. If I undo this, put him back, um, I can actually 
with all of uh, these objects selected, because this is a fresh working environment, not like my original files, I don't really care what happens to these files, I can just join them together as one entity. So if I press Control J while everything is selected, our primary object, which is what's selected in yellow here, uh, is what counts as the main object. We're joining everything to that primary object. And because the primary object was the head, this orange dot, which represents the, um, the center of the model, is now what it rotates on. Okay, so I'm just going to make sure, that, yeah, that's all good. Just, uh, that's in the middle now, so uh, let's rotate on the Z axis. So again, I pressed R and pressed Z. So now he's looking off to his right. We'll export him as number two. And now that this head is one object, I, I just need to left click once to select it. Let's have so a now he's looking left. off to uh, his left. So that's number three. We have four men on a strip, so we need uh, number four if we want every figure to be unique to be doing something else. We've got one looking right, we've got one looking left. If I press Alt plus R, that resets rotation, so now he's looking straight ahead. Um, let's have this guy looking up. So if pressing R and Z makes him look on the Z axis, pressing X, which again is the red line you can see running through the model, we'll have him looking up and down. Let's have him looking up. It's just daydreaming in the middle of the battle. Now, some of you might know this, but perhaps some of you don't. I'm going to need to teach you one more trick. He looks kind of cool looking up, but having him modeled this way is actually a problem if we are 3D printing supportless. Maybe some of you can see it. Look at his hat. If this figure is going to print without any supports, we need every part to sort of grow off the part underneath it. This hat has a protruding part at the back, which is lower than the part it spawns from, than the head. Now, this is a really obvious example, but it's a good learning opportunity for me. So I want to show you a kind of really basic, bodgy way in which I check whether a model is going to print support this before I've even exported it. Um, I'm just going to select everything on the backpack here and press H for hide that hides it. I'm going to press shift A, A for add, and add in mesh plane. And what that's done is it's added a flat square. It's much too big because this environment scale to export very small models. So I need to make it smaller. I press S for scale and move the mouse towards the middle of the screen. Left click, S for scale. Left click, paint nice and small. And this is how I do my layer checks, just hiding the base. I angle my um, mouse under the, um, the plane, press G for grab, and then Z for the Z axis. And I kind of get a sort of 3D print preview, as it were, if I move up along the model. I don't want to identify any islands. Everything should be connected to the models I'm moving up. So you can see why this model prints support this, because every new thing that appears is originating off the uh, the center of the model. But once we reach the neck and the head, about here, we're going to see, aha, the hat sticks in by itself. Sorry for the hard cut there, guys. Um, I did proceed to fix this model. As you can see, I, I cropped it down on that. But I realized that as I was going, that the stuff I was doing was kind of advanced, and it was a bit of a, for a beginner-friendly tutorial, I was really making you bite off more than you can chew, perhaps. So I've decided that this is a bit too complicated a pose and we'll just go in with our three normal figures and um, maybe a different one to make up our strip. Now, as you might remember from our last tutorial, uh, we have to place anything we export in 3D Builder. So these models are just sitting here and repairing. And when they're done, I will be importing them straight into Litchi Slicer, which I will show you. Uh, as it happens, but I'm not going to make you sit and wait for this guy to fix himself. So here we are in Litchi Slicer. Hopefully this is a familiar sight to you guys if you watched the last tutorial. Um, if you didn't watch the last tutorial while you're watching this one, you should begin with that one. But anyway, um, here we have our four models imported, uh, looking like some kind of Far Eastern deity. Anyway, um, we'll want to select all of these. Click Scale. And uh, if you remember rightly, 11.65 is our magic number for 6 mils. So there we go. These guys are now 
I'm going to click one of them, click move, move the first one to minus 7.5, the second one to 7.5, minus 2.5, and 2.5. And what that does is it gives us a unit with a 20 millimeter frontage. Now we click the library button. We click the cube to spawn in a cube. Click scale. The cube is already selected. I untick this little padlock so that we can change all these variables independently of each other so they don't scale up together. We're going to go for a 20 millimeter width on the x-axis, 5 millimeter depth on the y-axis, and a 1 millimeter height. And there we go. We have our strip. Click export, export to 3D file, and just save it. And there we are. I will uh, show you the finished product. And there we are. Uh, that's now its own model. We have a strip that can go straight to a 3D printer. And our troops are all completely unique. And my reason for making this video is to show you that with, uh, with the Blender files and a bit of basic Blender knowledge, uh, you can make an army in which no man need look the same. Some might say this is a bit extreme for 6 mil, and uh, maybe I'd agree, but if you're doing like 10 mil, 15 mil, I think uh, this is a nice touch. Just show show your forces a bit of extra love and attention. Anyway, guys, hope that was useful for you. Please do uh, get in touch, either with comments on YouTube or uh, on the Facebook group, uh, if you have any questions or suggestions for uh, future content or tutorials. I um, My aim here is really to make prospect of using Blender as unintimidating as possible. I know that a new program like this can be very scary on the face of things. Um, I just want you to feel comfortable and confident in, well, making these models your own. Anyway, take care. Uh, have a lovely day.